Red Beard Show. Down here in my basement, another day in paradise. Thanks for joining me. Mega Bond's in the house. Got him out from behind the camera. <laughs> Thanks again for your help there, brother. Thank you. You're doing such great work. Thanks, bud. Loving the last few episodes. I hope you are too. Right. And uh, also, I want to thank my sponsors. Vancouver Seed Bank. .ca. I want you to get growing, I want you to get growing now, and I want you to order your seeds from Vancouver Seed Bank. Please. Those guys are really great, and they got all the best seeds in the world, as well as the best advice. So get in touch with them, please. I want to thank Kind Selections, Beard Brothers Society, and Shatter Beard for helping get me the best medicine in the world. You can get it as well. Get in touch with these folks. They got your seed needs taken care of. Sorry, your extract needs. They don't have the seeds yet. Maybe someday in the future. You never know. Uh, so who else? I want to thank uh, Dirty Dave. Hey, making me handsome every day. Dirty Dave, get your shirts down at CCHQ headquarters. That's Mark Emery store, 307 West Hastings. I want to thank Remo Nutrients for helping me, helping me grow the most amazing plants and the best food in the world. Remo's won, I can't even count them, international awards. I think it's 19 or 20 now. Uh, best grower in the world, now making the best food in the world. Get in touch with Remo, ask for it at your local hydroponics store. And last but not least, I want to thank my beer sponsor, 12 Kings Pub. Oh, I forgot Aim Kilns. Fuck. Aim Kilns, 12 Kings Pub, Remo. Thank them all. They're all awesome, all good people, and I just encourage you to please support your local businesses. So, black. Sometimes I get it, sometimes I don't. <laughs> so today, what are we doing today, man? What are we doing today? Breaking out the moss. I, oh. Yeah, I got some more of this OG moss coming in the mail, so I figured, let's get to work. I know you're loving it, aren't you? So Vagabond's gonna carve up a Yoda, just loving his Yodas while the Star Wars uh, hype is real. Right the train. That's right. And I've got uh, a couple different sections started. I got about six hours into it yesterday, so I did some wigwagging and stacking. And I haven't seen this yet. Let's pull it out yet. and have a look. Let's pull it out. So it's just over here in the kill. These are the two sections that I've got done. Real nice uh, wigwag pattern. And uh, that's the other section. Put your hand behind it or something. Yeah, I see that. Get my black background behind it. So these two sections here are going to get sleeved. I'm going to put one inside the other. Nice. And I think in this one is going to go inside this one. Just like that. Right in there. So I've got to adjust the size a little bit. This one's going to get made a little more narrow to fit in. And uh, we'll flare this one out. And let's get sleeving. So I think I'm pretty much at the right size. Before I can do the sleeve, I've got to change this side here so that this can go all the way in and open it right up. I usually attach a little clear ring or something at the end that I can lose uh, as I uh, get to the end here. So, uh, well, let's just get started, shall we? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So we're taping this show on a Friday. We're headed to Vegas on the Monday. We might have some fun clips to show you of that show. Let's see what we come up with. We don't know. We don't know what's gonna happen. So, uh, yeah, we don't know when this one's gonna air. That's right. We, the, we, you might be watching this in fucking June. Time, Who knows? time is uh, getting confusing. It is. The time time space continuum <laughs> stops at the fucking door here. But that's cool. We're really enjoying getting these shows in the can, so we can do a little bit of editing and make it the best we can do for you. So, uh, on that note, shall we get started? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm going to start opening up my sleeve there and getting that ready. I got one eyeball made, I got to make another eyeball, and then I got to coil pot up some Yoda. Decent. Decent. Let me turn on the exhaust fan. Oh, and I better make sure the intake window is open. Let me just grab that. Ah. No wonder it was so warm in here. Oh yeah. Short sleeve weather, eh, Vagabond? <laughs> I can't wear the short sleeves when I'm working with my Delta mag. It just roasts my arms hard, hard. So, uh, I just read on the interwebs today that a member of our glass community has passed on, and I thought I'd just mention his name right off the top of the show. Uh, I got to know David McAllister when he was up in Canada learning how to blow glass, it seemed. He was working, uh, he worked with Corey's shop for a bit and he worked with uh, I think Skullfish and a few other folks in the uh, Vancouver area. So uh, anyway, it's kind of it's very sad to hear about his passing and uh, 
Uh, my condolences to his family and uh, close friends down there. So I don't know any details, just that uh, he passed. And uh, so, yeah, just kind of sad, dude. Young fella, take a moment and love your, hu hug your loved ones. Love your hugged ones. All right. Hissing, hissing. All right, so let's get this piece out of the kiln and just get it ready. I'll work on the interior piece first. I think we're really close to uh, the right size. I just need to, oh, I don't have my uh, propane on yet. Uh oh Can you tell this is the first piece of the day? Everybody look at what Megalon's doing. Oh, wait, wait, wait. It's black one. He's spotlight. There we go. Bloody snowstorm out there, man. Yeah, yesterday was nice. And A little more of it. Okay, you got a lighter? We are so prepared here on the Red Beard Show. I tell you. So, I just gotta marver this down. Now, when I'm working with OG Moss, I want to use an oxidizing flame. And I've also got my kiln set at 950. So I'm going to close up the end here. I had opened it up thinking I was going to put another section on the end, but I really don't need it, so close it up. I can always change my mind after. I think I'll just do a nice little swirl termination here. So this is going to be fun. This is going to be a uh, non-functional beer mug. Yes! We haven't done one of those together. We've never done one of these. It's been a little while since I've made anything that's not a pipe. A couple of those trophies I made recently. Okay, so now that I've got that closed up, just got to narrow down the, the size of this vessel. Oh yeah, I wanted to thank uh, the Mud Sharks 3 for sending in some music for us to chill out to here. We're rocking to those guys today. And they are from the Lower Mainland in Vancouver. If you are a member of a band and you've got any music you want us to play or something like that, and most important, it's not copyrighted and not going to get us in trouble with the YouTube robots, get in touch with me. Send me a link. And better yet, send me some CDs or... Uh, or a memory card with your work. Make it easy for me. I'm busy. We're just gonna do this half at a time. Don't drop down and I'll marver it. This is really thickening it up as well. So this piece I've got in my hand is OG Moss and Illuminati. And this will be the inner sleeve. So this is when you look inside your mug, you're going to see all these wigwag lines. Should look pretty psychedelic. On that AGE hustle, eh? Speaking of that, hey, how was that uh, symposium? It was awesome. That was a lot of fun. Totally, really good event. Uh, Kiwi and the organizers did a great job. Uh, it was just great. What was, what also, what made it great was how many people showed up of the glass blowers. We had a really good representation of our community. A lot of people came. And the buyers. That was what, I, and the other thing that made it very successful was the buyers. It was definitely some money changing hands. Got to say, a uh, big thanks to Canada Emporium. Yeah. They, uh, they bought the Yoda. Cannabis Emporium in Ottawa. They were one of the bigger buyers of the evening. Ballers. 
like he was stocking his store right up. And he just heard about the event a few days before. Just marmoring this down. I'm gonna take my punty off and have a look at the uh, outer sleeve, see how we're doing for size. Okay, let's see what this one over here looks like. I think we're just about there. So basically I just hold it up behind there and have a look. And is the one slightly larger than the other? Why, yes it is. So that should do it. Now I just gotta open up the outer sleeve. So I'll put the inner one back in the kiln. There's my lighter. Oh, well, safety break, safety break. Safety break, safety break, hold down. I found my uh, bed tanner. I was looking hard for this earlier today. Yeah. What do I have in here? Well, something I got at the symposium. Got to see my good friends, the Beard Brothers Society. Got myself a nice chunk of the shatter. Set this down here in a safe spot. Oh no, that is a chunk. That's almost as thick as it is. No, I'm not gonna dab all of this at once. That's gotta be a couple grams right there. Thanks, Beard Brothers. This guy's got the best meds ever. And they got the awards to prove it. Cheers. So, 
let's get this bubble attached to the end, take my plug out. So I just want to cap it with this bubble so that it the sleeve ends with clear. So that I know I'll get all of my pattern into it. And that part won't get wasted. Right here to my left, like right here. So, in a little bit, we're gonna take the camera for some close-ups over there at Vagabond. Tell me when you're ready for that, bud. I'm coming on you right now. start to see what I'm up to, just capping it with this clear and then blowing it out so the wall is so the wall is even all the way. A little fine tuning now. So now I've got this nicely uh, cylinder wall all the way across. I can open that end up. this a uh, double wall like my usual ones like so that they stay cold longer I really decided we were just gonna do a single wall double layer we'll probably stick to that stick to the game plan sure. Did you see I had my rod in there and I was marvering at the same time? That really squishes that wall nice and even. Now the last thing we got to do is just see how I did. And that's by taking this piece out of the kiln and actually inserting it, seeing how it lands. So I got quite a bit of room in there. I could make my inner a bit bigger. And I think I might. Let's see, do I have a piece I could add to the end of it? I could. Notice there was one little section of Illuminati and moss here. I don't think so. Hmm. I think it'll be all right. I'll just. Blow it out a little bit, so it's a bit of a tighter fit. It's definitely a bit easier if it's not a super loose fit, so I think I'll just go back and puff out my vessel a little ways.
just getting a nice even heat through the whole vessel here. A little puff, a little pull. Just trying to increase this in size in every dimension. Plenty came off. Hey, it's Kind Selections. Hey, man. Yeah, we're just filming an episode of the Red Beard Show. Yeah, and I was just saying, hey, it's Kind Selections. How the fuck are you, buds? Excellent. What are you running? Nice. Headband. Blue Dream, which is Critical Mass and Blue Dream. Critical Dream, excellent. Bubba, Critical Mass on its own. So four different runs. All right, on. Stoked. Well, if you folks want to get some of that, get in touch with Kind Selections. We'll hit them on their Instagram or Facebook. Cool, well, you want me to call you back when we're done filming? Cool. I was, uh, yeah, did you get a chance to see Jeremiah? Hey, that's a great time because my show goes live today at 4, so he'll be down at the Pot TV Studios. I'll tell him so. All right, brother. Thanks, man. Those guys are so nice. That's one of the reasons they're my sponsors. I'm only, I will only be sponsored by the nicest, good, goodest people out there. So that's a little better. It's still a little loose, but my length is better. So I think what I'll do now is, uh, I think I'll puff it out and lengthen it just a little more. Just a little bit of trial and error here. How's it going over there, bro? Oh, uh, What are you doing? Gathering? Gathering. Solid? Uh, I was coil popping out of the solid and blow it out. Okay. Kind of like that method to do. So you kind of go halfway and then you... Yeah, we go coil pot to make a little uh, blow tube out of, the, out of the color and then yeah. I uh, pull on, pop a little out. Yeah. Right on. Do you ever make like a solid blob and then like divot it in the end with a uh, carbon reamer? And blow it. Yeah, and then use it just like kind of drill a little divot into the end. Oh yeah, that works too. Depends on how much you want to, uh, how big you're trying to make your gather and your. Just depends on oh. how much OG moss you want to give me. <laughs> <laughs> Go fuck yourself. I'm gonna need five more sticks over here. Oh uh, man. Go ahead here. Oh fuck. Hey. Oh man. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I ordered another three fucking pounds. Why not, eh? It's a beautiful color, eh? I love it. You know what? Uh, it's also supporting my bro Walter with his little uh, gun mount industry. Oh, yeah. Just playing with a lot of different greens this week in my shop. And just a uh, tough color for especially a Red Max. Yeah. Which isn't the nicest on color. But this OG Moss just is butter. Yeah. Yes, it is. So I'm just slowly working down the side of my uh, vessel here, expanding it. I'll probably go too far and then have to bring it back down. It's just the nature of it. I'm taking my best guess here. Moss doesn't seem to be, uh, mind being worked a lot either, which I'm happy about. He kind of likes it. It's working out all the little bubbles over here. Yeah, there's nothing over here.
You really want the wall to be as straight as possible. If you got any wows in the wall, any dips, you're going to see it. It'll trap a bubble. So you really want to try and have that nice straight wall. Okay, well, let's try that one. We'll see. I hope I didn't make it too big this time. Oh, she's real close. It fits all the way, barely. Holy, that's really close. Okay, time for a break. But yeah, how you doing over there, bud? Oh, I'm getting there. Decent. Well, I'm ready for another dab. I got this uh, sample given to me at the symposium by Fant Shatter. Purple candy kush. I thought I'd give it a shot. I was, uh, I'm always a little skeptical when trying samples off of people I don't know and, and just getting to meet them. And I have to say, I was very pleasantly surprised with all of the samples I got from uh, Canawide Dispensary. And those folks are at, uh, just had an event, well, it's actually tonight while we're taping this, but it's a past event by the time you're watching this. Woo! Damn, time continuum. Right? Anyway, the Extract Zen Party. So, uh, yeah, congratulations. I'm going to do a nice, big, fat dab of this. Uh, that's goodies, these goodies. breathing I'm with it showing off all the tall cans of beer I was able to score in Vancouver oh la la from Port Moody Moody Ales I'm gonna try the affable IPA massive thanks for this massive beer 12 Kings pub we closed down the pub uh, when we were in the city there this weekend a lot of fun it was busy too. It was karaoke night and everyone was everyone was bouncing, I guess you could say. Some really funny acts. So in the background we got Vagabond here. He's carving up his Yoda head, getting ready. And I'm gonna do this sleeve now. So, wow, that is delicious. We're not just gonna set that down yet. Nice growler size too. All right, so I'm gonna put the sleeve in. I'm gonna tag it on one on either side at the end of the outside cup. And then we're gonna go for it. So I better get a punty ready ahead of time. I want maybe a 12 mil punty. I think I got one of these out here somewhere. Maybe in that box or just down in the case behind the camera. Where, oh, where did I put this? I'll just get out another stick. Get my disc nippers. Hey, Vaughn, your spotlight. Don't be checking your emails now. Oh, I'm looking at Yoda's face. Oh, okay, good. Your views. There we go, 12 mil rod. Found it. Get 
decent. All right, well, let's get this sleeve on the go, shall we? Get another on my film here. Get all the dust off of it. And now I'm just gonna very gently slide them in one side to the other. Line up my terminations where I want them. I think that's pretty good right there. And now the first thing I'm gonna do is tag it. So just heating it up in one spot and I'll just drop down to my marver pad and press it once there. I could turn this up a bit. More heat. Okay, and then go down and press it again there. So those spots, and I'm just gonna go back in and heat it for a sec, get rid of any acute angles. I do not want that crack in after. Now I can go and remove this side. Now I want to remove all of the clear from the end. I want to make sure it's straight Illuminati. Like that. Okay, so I'm going to keep my paddle on the ready here. I'll be using that in the beginning. So now I'm just going to chase the air out of it. It's much like making a stick stack. I can puff through it. The handle on my right is the inner vessel. So that will push it out into the other. So that helps. Just working my way up the slope here. Marvering the air out between the layers. Like that. Better get my longer paddle out, that's hot. So, I'm just going to keep marvering as I work along. Pause once in a while. I'd like to let this cool down a bit. I don't want it to get too uh, molten. Okay, let's continue. I'm going to need to put my punty on soon. I should be able to do another... Uh, half inch to an inch. Okay, so for this I'd like to raise my marble pad up. I've got a big marble mold here. I'm just gonna put that up there like that. Okay, let's get a big punty on here. Oh, our music ran out. Oh, oh, thanks, my charts. That was awesome. You just have to listen to the, the musical tone of my voice. I could talk in a sing song quality. That's not an album of music. Bigabon runs for the, the music. Hey, I always wanted to do a Redbeard musical episode. I think it's going to happen yet. We'll have to get some musical talent involved though, because otherwise it'll just be painful. Entertaining, maybe, but painful, seriously. Alright, so, now that I've got the two-handed uh, happening, just continue to work the arrow. It 
helps to puff it back up. Then go back in. Well, it kind of looks like I got myself an air bubble here. Which isn't the end of the world. I could, if it's uh, massive, I could pop it out. We'll see where it lands on the, uh, sometimes what looks big now, when you shrink it, when you uh, really melt it down, the bubble will just kind of co coalesce into one, just one little bubble. So we'll see what happens with that. I'll monitor that situation. Gonna just keep working our way down. So just working my way down and there was a small crack that happened, but it's healed itself because I'm just liquefying this piece. And as I approach that uh, crack, it just disappears from the radiant heat involved. I was thinking of adding a giant uh, piece of moss tubing on either end of this, kind of capping the piece for the mug. It probably look pretty good. So that completes the sleeve, and it's pretty good. It's not flawless, maybe, but it's pretty fucking good. We'll see what I can do to clean it up. A couple tricks up my sleeve. For one, the handle's got to go somewhere. So if there's anything I gotta hide, or or not hide, but you know, I put the focus elsewhere, draw the eye to its uh, features elsewhere. at an angle like this I don't know if you can see that on the camera but I've got this on a massive angle using the flame to bounce down the piece to warm it up as I approach I haven't been at this end in quite a while so I'm being careful about approaching it Those bubbles turned into not, not much to worry about at all. Air trap, we call it. I'm being fussy.
Okay, so I could just keep working this uh, for a little bit. I'm just going to widen it up. Straighten the wall, make it a nice smooth cylinder. <clears throat> Maybe by then we'll be ready to bring a camera over and put the spotlight on Vagabond over there. Well, How's it going, minutes, bud? A few minutes yet. Excellent. Plugging away. My eyebrows on. Also looking forward to the uh, ice yes. convention across the street from uh, In Vegas. The AGE. It is an association. It's not a competition against them. It's more of the party. The smoking room. The smoking room. International cannabis experience. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, we're going to be there. Thanks to Jeremy for securing us that. Appreciate that, boy. That's great. that. I'm going to set this in the kiln for a little bit. I'm going to paddle this down and clean it up. Maybe I'll do that first actually. Then I can attach the next piece onto it. It does have a clear ring there. I'll probably leave that. That would look good. But let's clean it up first. I think I'm going to scissor a lot of that off. So I've got my cutting edge sear shears around here somewhere. Here's one set. I prefer this set. It's got a bit of a finer point and a smoother action. So it's a simple matter of just cutting off the excess glass, the glass that you don't need or want. So we got to get it hot, of course. Hot, of course. <laughs> Getting right into it here. There we have it. There's the excess. There's a nice clean edge. Okay, I'm gonna get it in the kiln for a bit. Take a little pause? Yeah, I'm gonna take a little pause.
I'm just finishing up the fumed spun ribbon handle for our beer mug. Check out this clip of how we do this type of uh, fumed horn. We just did it and uh, we got a clip of that. just want to give this a slight curve like a beer mug handle needs. I think I'll do that now. Got a nice taper on it. I'm liking the shape. It's a 
nice uh, size. I'm gonna draw it out. I'm lengthening it, lengthening it slightly. A little more flame just on the big end here. A little tricky with this heat gradient and heat base. You gotta kind of give the thick glass a little more attention. So it's a very slow curve. Gonna kind of let gravity uh, do its thing. Bend it up a bit, nice and slowly. A little bit of flame on the inside prevents that devitrification from forming, that fogginess. It kind of gets wrinkly and foggy. Oh. Something like that. And we can always lay it on the marver here to true up this direction. Like so. Alright. I like. So what I'd like to do is uh, I'm just gonna heat up this end. I'm thinking it'll come in like this. And then I'm gonna bend it back like a little hook. And that's where we'll set Yoda, is what I'm thinking. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. We'll get it nice and hot. Now just focusing on the end, and I'm just gonna draw it back a little like this. Kind of like that. Giving me a little tail left on this side. Okay, I'm gonna burn it off here. I'll just gather up that little bit of a tail. A little more flame. There's a slight wrinkling happening on the inside of this corner, so we just smooth that off like so. And that's a pretty much it. Uh, again, we can adjust our angle here nice and carefully. Make sure it's straight. So, I think what I'll do is punty on to the... Uh, get a little punty ready here. Oh, that's a better one. I'll punty on to this side right here where Yoda's going to get welded. And then we'll take off the fat end. I think I'll mount the handle onto the cup and then attach Yoda. Just want to keep him out of the flame and kind of in a nice safe spot while we work, you know? Safest spot right now, in that kiln over there, far away from me. Okay, I'm just gonna burn this end off. We could give this a little bit more curve. That is a pretty shallow curve now that I look at it. We'll heat it right in the middle. Again, we can't just heat one spot. We gotta heat kind of the whole length. Well, half the length in the middle here. This time we'll just get it hot enough to move. Just kind of giving it a little bit of push as I go here. You can see it starting to curve. Just like that, I think that'll do it. A little space for your hand in there. And we just realized earlier I did that uh, Millie pull in episode 102. The OG Moss Illuminati Millie pull insert. So I've got some of that Millie chips here. We're gonna pick some up. We're gonna put magnifier chips on this handle. It'll match the uh, cup real nice. So I think I can leave it at that. I'm gonna leave it in that cone shape because that's what I'll heat up and I'll press onto the mug. So that's the handle of the mug. We're gonna put a milli chip, 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 and Yoda right here. And a great big mug right here. 
super heavy base is what we're thinking. See you in a bit. And we're back. Time for a safe break. Hey, hello. Got some Beer Brothers, beautiful goods here. Thanks again, Culture Rising in London, for sending me this amazing Earl Electric Canada unit. Love it. Works so good. <coughs> All right, so we are on final assembly stage. Time to get this cup together. This is, of course, the OG Moss Illuminati cup. It's time to flatten the bottom, so I'm just going to take it out of the kiln. I'll attach my blue hose and swivel. Let's get to work, shall we? Good to work. All right. So, I'll show you what we're dealing with first. Let me get all the kiln dust off it. One of these days I'm going to line my kiln with something sweet so it doesn't get so dang dusty. Alright, let's check this out. See if we can focus in on that. There it is. Oh yeah. Double layer. All the way. Come on camera. There you are. Isn't that sweet? And of course in between the green is Illuminati so this puppy's going to glow like crazy. That's the whole section there. And the end is pretty sweet, so I thought I'll make that end the bottom. And we'll uh, flatten her and see what it looks like. You'll be looking at that sweet window in the bottom of the mug. Alright. So, let's get this puppy plugged in. So I like to flatten on the vertical. So I'm just going to set this up like this. I'll put it on an angle so you can see what the heck I'm doing here. Hopefully that works okay for me. So right now I'm just going to uh, just kind of heat it up, get it ready to flatten, make it more of a flat bottom, uh, just using gravity and blowing through it, and then I'll flatten it here. Most of the work will be done before I touch the barb pad. base. I don't mind if it bulges out a little at the base. I'm going to put this whole window in the bottom there. So I just kind of uh, push it as you rotate. You can double check here. Good. Looks real good. Nice clean bottom. Can I have a look? Whoa, where are you? Hello. There it is. So, as you can tell, just me and one man smoke show today. 
Oh, sorry, friend. Okay. Stole your name there for a second. Got me in a remote and a zoom and a cam. We're good. Just finishing up this beast and I'll vagabond my home to his family. Thanks again, Vagabond, for doing all this awesome splicing and editing. So this is going to now go... Well, I was going to put it on this way. This being the top. Now I'm thinking of going this way. And this little tail here, I'm going to use as a, a kickstand so it won't fall over with the weight of the handle. So it looks like we're pretty much there. Pretty much there. One thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put the uh, cylinder in the kiln. I'm just going to work on the tail of this little guy here. I'm going to curl this tail up a little more. See what we're dealing with here. So that's the fumed horn that you've seen me make. And I made that on the uh, saw an insert there. So now I just want to clean up this little bit here. So I'll just use my tweezers. Like that, just a little neater uh, spin on the tail. See what I'm talking about? Just like that. So we are just about ready. I'm going to uh, I'm gonna put a little dollop where it's going to attach to the. Uh, Maybe switch my punty while I'm at it too. A little dollop of clear where it's going to attach to the can. And then I'm going to put a little, uh, I think I'll switch my punty around as well. But I think that's the first thing I'll do. Switch punty. Go right to this tail. Super permanent weld styles. I don't want that coming loose. Okay. Now I can remove this bunty. it off a little better. There we go. Okay, so as I was saying, I want a little dollop where they're going to touch. I don't want to crack off the jar. So that's right here on the bottom. I'll do that one first. The top, I think, will meet just right at the tip of the nipple there. The wide end. here so okay I think we're ready ready for something up the top and just droop it over a little more. Just 
just use gravity for this droop. Kind of a just fine fine tune in the uh, slump of the uh, handle. And we'll press Yoda right on the top here. Okay, so this is ready. I'm not going to attach it yet because when I flare the mouthpiece of the cup, it would be quite the wobble if I had this uh, handle on already. So I'll do that before I put the handle on. I'm going to stick a punty onto the bottom of that cup. This looks great. Okay, in the kiln. Let's check out the Yoda in case you've uh, forgotten what it looks like. Let's take this opportunity to zoom in on Yoda and then I'm gonna have another safety break. Look at this guy. <laughs> That's awesome. Spinning eyes. Well done, buddy. Of course, that's Vagabond's work. Vagabond Glass, check him out on Instagram. Give him a like and a share and all that. All right. What's that about the safety bear? Oh yeah. Got some beautiful shatters here. This nice big fat dab right here. Stick. up to the bottom of that cup. I'm going to set this down. I'm going to just clean up my punty for a sec. I don't want this punty breaking off attached to this, so make sure it's nice and clean. Tapers slightly. And I am going to attach this with a permanent hot well. So we're going to get both sides soupy hot. And then place the punty. Anytime you're putting a punty onto a flat bottom vessel, you need to do it with a very hot seal like that. Okay, so we got her. And again, I'm double checking it. You really don't want to fuck your face up here. So we'll just let that harden up, turning it on axes. Just waiting for it to harden. And then I'm going to go ahead and heat the uh, top side here. pop a hole that time. Now I've blown it so thin that that should be almost the perfect hole. 
I'll probably just pick off a slight little bit, get my punty ready. It's pretty awesome. Give it a ream. So I've left the slightest line of clear on that, like a lip wrap, and that'll just uh, get worked right onto that lip. Just kind of protects that color so it doesn't boil or anything while I go to flare it out. So let's see how I did, see if it's even and if I have to shear anymore, or I do have to tear just a little off. moving glass by swiping it. Take a paddle and even it off the end. This calls for my big reamer. to get a nice even heat base on this so I can get a good flare. Leave a little paddle now as well. process when you're flaring this lip out. You don't want to fold it or go too fast or get too thin or get lopsided or anything. Just take your time. So now I'll use a carbon rod inside as I marve her down. Listening to the mud sharks. In the lower mainland of BC, mud sharks three, I guess. Pretty great. Pretty 
pretty happy with that. Where are you? Oh, there's center. So now when you look down inside this cup, let's see if I can get you centered in here. Oh, there you are. That's what you'll see. Well, without the punty in the middle. Pretty great. Okay, let's get it in the kiln. Let that soak for a little while. Cross all of our fingers that uh, she ain't gonna crack. And I think I'm gonna have another safety break. Oh yeah. Man, this uh, hash is just lovely. Oh. Sometimes I gotta warm up my nail to get her to stick. Uh oh, there's a big blob. We'll take this and then we'll have a short cut and we'll get back to work. safety break I tell you what all right so let's get the handle on the piece and then we can see where we're gonna put Yoda <coughs> oh, oh, oh I think I can take this away and let's have a look shall we I that's the beer Hello, hey buddy. Good dog. Watch out. <laughs> okay. It's gonna go somewhere like that. So line up the side that I want it to be on. I'm just kind of looking at my wig wags and picking a spot where it's not going to like cover anything. So mostly got the handle hot like liquid and I got the background cup warm what the top really really hot right about there I think So I think I'll just go straight away to the uh, welds here. I want to smooth them out so there's no acute angles all the way around. Just using a pinpoint flame. The one side of the handle acts as a brace while I do the other. I got to be pretty quick here. I don't want anything to crash. And I'll even go by and flash a bit of heat into this one. Not enough to lose my... Uh, lose my shape, but enough to keep it hot.
guess a little busy here, but I could have hit the zoom button. That's that thing. There you go. taken a little longer than I wanted to so I'm really happy this one didn't crack on me so I'll just work my way around this one gonna mount to the handle with so I'm gonna gather up a little blob of clear on my handle on my right hand this one. I suppose I could have used some uh, 12 mil for this but I just kind of wanted to go slow with it push in and then pull away. That is called a one time. Since it's a sealed unit, I can blow as well. Might as well. I'm going to continue to gather some glass up here. Something like that, I think. Okay, let's see. Just gonna shrink it down a bit. And then I'm going to uh, take off the other side. And actually, I'll probably punch you back up to this latch while I take that side off. So that's a nice, thick latch. 
And now it's just going to shrink back down behind him like that. Where's that? So, as you can see, I've just added a little blob on the back of his neck. Kind of on the back of his chin there, a the, the bit of his throat. There you go. Okay, so, I'm going to punty up to that. And I'm going to do a very hot seal because, golly, I do not want to have to explain to Vagabond how I dropped his Yoda on the floor. So, double check that. So see how I just rise above the flame to let things cool? Simple thing, but I do it so often I should mention it. Just gonna heat the back of his head off here. Oh, pop it. There we go, don't forget to pop it. So I had a thought as to, uh, we have to leave a hole in it there. And that's going to be, I think that's a pretty good spot for it actually. We'll have a look when I mount it on. I was thinking of uh, maybe putting a milli chip over that hole, but just uh, see that hole I did there. I think that that's going to tag the lip of the, of the uh, mug. I need to have a look, so let's, let's get a pan out. Zoom, zoom. And I feel like Yoda's gotta go back in the kiln for a sit, but I wanna have a fitting. So he's gonna go just like that. Yeah, I think if I tag his, uh, top of that hole, that'll be good. Okay. So, I'm going to just add the smallest little, smallest little bit to the top of the uh, just going to add the tiniest little blip to the top of that uh, hole. go. All right. Let's get this Yoda in the kiln. I think I want it all to sit for another 5-10 minutes, so I think we'll have to do another edit. Another little. Stop the press. Holy shit. I almost forgot to give away a t-shirt. Shit. Thank you so much, Dirty Dave, for uh, doing up all these awesome shirts. And thanks so much to my beautiful partner, Jan Little Art. Check out Jan Little Art on the line, on the interwebs. So, who's going to win the uh, t-shirt today? So, let's see. Well, by the time you're watching this, I'll just be uh, back from Vegas, from the uh, AGE, American Glass Expo. I'm packing my bags tonight, flying out tomorrow morning as I sit here in Time Warp film land. So, my question for you is, guess what, it has nothing to do with Vegas. <laughs> I'm traveling with two of my good buddies, Canadian glass blowers, one I work with every day. The other is from Quadra Island. Who is that glass blower from Quadra Island? Put that name of that glass blower, or his company name, either way, his first name, we always say it on the show, and uh, get to work. You get a t-shirt. First one on the comments and the YouTube. All right. Hey, all right. Safety brakes on. Get back to work. Oh, golly. Now remember, if you're a Canadian patient and you're looking for good extracts, I want you to get in contact with Kind Selections, Beard Brothers, Beard Brothers Society. 
and Shatterbeard. Those three companies, those three dispensaries, got you covered. Okay, so we're gonna get Yoda out of the kiln. Oh my gosh, it's time. Now I need a tool for this. We better make sure I got it handy. I forgot to do that before I pushed the button. Oh, here we go. It's the claw grabber. Tech tip of the day. If you're making spoons, you'll need one of these. It grabs onto the end of a piece so that you can remove the other end, apply it or finish it, put it in the kiln. It's a great tool to have. <coughs> I always uh, warm up the end of it before I grab the piece. You don't want any thermal shock. So, beautiful Yoda. Get out that mug. So, just gotta get this all hot before I can place it. Anytime you're welding one glass to another, if you want it to be permanent, you want it to be the same temperature when you apply the, when you hit each other. So that's what I'll do here. It's going to be a double uh, brace here again. So I'm heating it up in two spots on Yoda. Alright. Placing, uh, letting them rest where where I want them. That looks good. I'm gonna polish this brace first, the top small one. It only takes a second. And now that's done. And now I can get to work on the bottom brace. Well, I'll give it a second here to, to cool. Good there. it up uh, on the other brace now, the thick one underneath this chin. There is no try, there is only do. Something like that, eh? Alright, well that's good and thick and solid. Pretty great. I'm being a little fussy here. I don't have to be hitting it anymore. I think I'll call it good right there. What do you think of that? Ha <laughs> ha! That's awesome. Love it. Okay, back in the kiln she goes. The top weld's good. The bottom weld looks great. So we better zoom back up. That looks awesome. Let's get it in the kill. Alright. Woo! 
Yoda. That's a lot of work there, Yoda. So I was a little nervous. <laughs> All right, well, time for another little pause, and I'm gonna do another little bit of kiln sitting. Just waiting for the, another. I'll probably give it about five or ten minutes, and uh, I just gotta rip off that handle, and I'll show you some finished picks. So really, this game's done. I'm gonna call it a show right there, so Vagabond can stop doing all these goddamn editing and everything else. So uh, yeah, all I gotta do with that is I'll probably grab it with a uh, heat pad or one of my massive claws, and I'll take that uh, punty mark off, and uh, the punty and the punty mark, and that's about it, man. So yeah, thanks for joining me. I wanna thank my sponsors again, VancouverSeedBank.ca. I wanna thank Kind Selections, Beard Brothers Society, Shatter Beard, don't forget to get order now. Get your extracts in the mail. Dirty Dave, thanks for making me so handsome, brother. And Remo Nutrients, Aim Kilns, and 12 Kings Pub. Cheers, and good night. Have a good day. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. And thanks, Vagabond, again for all your work on this. Hey ho, check out this fucking amazing beer mug. We are ready to go to Vegas now. OG Moss Illuminati. Oh yeah. Check out those Melly chips on the handle. Those turned out guys. Pretty awesome.